What's up guys, welcome to Found Flicks. This time on Ending Explained, I'll be looking at the crude yet somehow very sweet oddball of a movie, Swiss Army Man. Yes, the movie where Harry Potter plays a farting corpse. But it is a really interesting journey with surprisingly a lot of layers and themes tied to the development of one man, finally becoming comfortable with who he is. Now this movie is open to a number of interpretations. A big part of it boils down to looking at the movie from one viewpoint or another. Either that Manny is a corpse that comes back to life, a kind of magical creature, or that the entire movie is fantasy. I personally believe that it is all fantasy, but more specifically, it's a metaphorical journey for the Hank character. To me, nothing in the movie can be taken at face value, and this is made clear early in the movie. We find Hank alone about to hang himself on a beach, only to be interrupted by Manny's body washing up on the shore. The corpse not only springs to life, seemingly due to the life-giving power of farts, but Hank then escapes the island by riding Manny's body on the ocean, flying across the waves on a fart-powered corpse jet ski. I mean, it's pretty insane, and you know, not the kind of thing that happens in real life. So that's why I believe the journey is entirely metaphorical, all in respect to Hank's current life perspective and how it develops via his friendship with Manny. Hank is lonely and isolated from the real world as we see in the desert island at the beginning, and it's upon Manny floating up that Hank finds a reason to go on, a friend. Even if it's a lifeless body, it's a start. And he confides to Manny how when he tried to kill himself, his life flashed before his eyes and there was nothing. No friends, parties, or any of what one would hope to see in their final moments. And so what Manny represents is the missing side of Hank's personality, a sort of primal or purely instinctive side that Hank has repressed over the course of his life. That's why at this point, Manny is dead. That side of Hank's personality has all but disappeared, leaving Hank an unbalanced mess. And it's as Hank further confides in Manny and becomes more comfortable with him that that side of Hank's personality is brought back to life. Manny becomes stronger as Hank taps further into that missing side of his personality. Hank teaches Manny the basics of human nature and is forced to face head on his particular demons. When asked by Manny what he's supposed to want as a person, Hank responds, probably just looking for happiness. That's what everyone does, a friend, a girlfriend, or a dog. You want to go home so you can have love. But you ran away because nobody loves you. Geez, Manny, that's harsh. But it's really that Manny doesn't have a filter of any kind. He's speaking straight from instinct. At this point, Manny has the viewpoint of a horny child, unable to understand what is right or wrong about what his body is doing or saying. Manny learns all about love, or really the fantasy of love, when they find a Sports Illustrated magazine. Hank envisions a future fantasy for the model and Manny, and as a result, Manny gets a boner, which has a mind of its own, darting around in all directions. Manny seems horrified by what his body is doing, but Hank reassures him it's normal, and believes the boner is pointing them in the direction home. It's interesting that they are following the directions a boner is pointing. Ever heard the phrase, don't think with your dick, think with your head? Manny is literally thinking with his dick. It's the fantasy of love that is guiding them at this point, and as long as that's the case, their journey will never end, because it's only when Hank can learn to love himself that his journey can finally come to a conclusion. We also find out more about Hank's perspective when Manny, now hung up on his newfound lustful feelings, wants to have sex, or at least some way to pretend to do it. Hank explains to him that's called masturbation. Manny asks if Hank masturbates a lot, and he says people aren't supposed to talk about that kind of stuff. Again, Hank's perspective is so repressed. Meanwhile, Manny doesn't have that ingrained in him, and is speaking straight without consideration. So from Manny's perspective, he doesn't think there's anything wrong or something to hide about their conversation. To further develop Hank's problem with masturbation, he goes off about an instance from when he was a kid when he was caught masturbating. Now Hank unwittingly thinks of his mom whenever he masturbates. So now we see how Hank views masturbation as something to be ashamed of, leading to lifelong sexual repression after that encounter as a child. This points to what Hank's main concern or problem is. He is entirely focused on what others think of him and how they will judge his actions. He references other things to reinforce this, like being concerned about what people would think of him dressed as a girl, even though no one is around, and tells Manny not to sing on the bus and wear headphones because people will laugh at you if you sing out loud. It's all about how someone else would potentially judge your behavior, even though we shouldn't be so beholden to outside opinions. Hank also is obviously guilty of overthinking things and living in his own head, allowing it to control him and prevent him from action in his life. This is seen most clearly in his not not exactly relationship with Sarah. Throughout the movie, it's presented that Hank knows Sarah, but it's not actually true. He's never even talked to her and is merely a girl that rides the same bus as Hank every day. He created a fantasy of a relationship, but was never willing to take the chance to actually talk to her. But since Manny isn't as inhibited, he can do things differently and they create a mock bus to recreate the scene for Manny and Sarah, Hank taking place as Sarah. Hank pumps Manny up to try to talk to Sarah saying, she's just as lonely as you are, but she doesn't have to be. Manny unfortunately is already overthinking 
overthinking things just like Hank and is concerned he will say something stupid and blow it. That's a big step to actually take action as once this is done, the fantasy is broken. And usually the fantasy is not how real life turns out. Hank is upset with Manny saying she's right there and you wouldn't say anything, but then Hank admits he wouldn't do anything either. However, Manny is able to work up the courage donning some sweet shades and talks to Sarah. He sits down with her and they have a nice conversation sharing earbuds and Manny asks Hank to put his hand on hers. Later, Manny revisits Hank's problem talking to Sarah about how Hank won't masturbate because of his mom. He doesn't know what masturbation is, but knows that it makes Hank happy. Wouldn't she just want him to be happy? Now Manny is slightly more matured in his perspective and what he says could be considered a normal and healthy way to deal with Hank's awkward situation. And here they almost kiss. Things get a little confusing since Hank is actually playing Sarah and there's a whole other layer about how Manny loving Hank is actually loving Sarah since he's dressed up as her and playing her. But that's a whole other can of worms we don't have time to get into. They do later fulfill the kiss when they fall off a pipe and to me this is the first major step of Hank's journey. This kiss is kind of the union between both sides of Hank's personality with Hank finally beginning to develop beyond his repression. But that union is far from complete as Hank still needs to fully take over for the physical crutch that is embodied by Manny. And there's still more that haunts Hank, something very important. He is embarrassed by his farts, which Manny thinks is sad. And Hank had even been going off into the woods to fart to hide them from Manny. That's how ashamed he is. And I think Hank's feelings about farts is the reason why farts are so important in the movie. Manny lets his farts be free while meanwhile Hank hides them. It is completely ridiculous to analyze what farts mean in a movie, but it's actually a hilariously big factor in this case. At this point, Hank is still a slave to his problems and it is being without love that seems to consume Hank the most. And he finally reveals to Manny that he doesn't really know the girl on the phone, Sarah, and thinks he would never be with her. But then a bear shows up and when Hank tries to put Manny to work, Manny sees a picture of Sarah with a guy and slumps down, suddenly powerless. Manny also feels like he's a loser because that's what being around Hank has taught him. The fantasy of Sarah has been broken for Manny. And so without the fantasy of Sarah's love, he is powerless. But Hank is starting to break through his own love fantasy for Sarah, saying we don't need her anymore, we have each other. Now that Hank has moved on from his romantic fantasy, he has moved on to loving Manny, or really himself. They launch into a tree, but Manny is still upset, confused by what he's feeling, reeling from losing his fantasy. Hank encourages him to think happy thoughts or just not think at all, but Manny can't stop thinking. Thoughts like if my best friend is hiding his farts, what else is he hiding? How do you hide your thoughts? Why do we have to hide everything? Hank loses his grip on the branch and then gets dragged away to certain death by the bear. Luckily, Manny is able to convulse himself to life and manages to scare off the bear, saving Hank. Now through the power of his feelings for Hank, Manny is able to be stronger than we've ever seen him before, essentially moving on his own. And as Hank was actually a positive influence on Manny this time, helped him to also move on and love Hank. Hank and Manny finally finish their trek, now with Manny carrying Hank on his back, and they are now guided by themselves rather than the boner or the the fantasy of love. They do find themselves at Sarah's house and arrive back at civilization. Hank is of course nervous about talking to Sarah as this is the biggest step in this process to actually confront the girl he's fantasized about through the whole journey. And I continue to believe that this is all a fantasy, not them suddenly making it back to the real world, but more to represent the idea of Hank's return to society and being willing to be around others once more. First they encounter Sarah's daughter Chrissy and once it's revealed that this is Sarah's house, Manny shuts down and now it's up to Hank on his own to deal with with the reality of who Sarah is rather than his fantasy. He tries to explain about Manny and his powers, but Manny is still lifeless. Hank then flees the scene, taking Manny's body and sliding down a hill to the ocean. Hank apologizes to Manny saying he wanted to give him all the things that he deserves and never thought he was worthy of until he met Manny. So now we see Hank feels he is worthy of the same as everyone else thanks to his fantastical psychological journey with Manny, emerging as someone who loves himself and is comfortable with who he is. Police and several others, including Sarah, join them on the beach and discover all the different sets that Hank and Manny had built. So apparently their entire fantasy world was like a few hundred feet from Sarah's house. It's just bizarre. Everyone is understandably quite confused at this point about what's going on and Hank is desperate to show them. But Manny isn't moving so Hank has to show them himself and he farts triumphantly in front of everyone, which smells really bad apparently. Hank stands up proudly, claiming the fart as his own. Finally, he has overcome his social problems and is now completely in touch with that long dormant part of his personality represented by Manny. He no longer needs Manny, the physical version, and is a complete person without him. Manny then rumbles back to life and Hank whispers into his ear. We don't hear what is said, but I think it's essentially thank you and goodbye or something like that. Thanks for the farts. Manny propels himself out into the ocean, smiling. His job now complete. So long, you beautiful farting bastard, and thank 
thank you for all you've done. And remember, children, always be proud of your farts. Farts make you who you are. So the entire movie is a psychological journey of Hank learning to process his personal problems and after learning to love himself first and foremost, is finally comfortable revealing his farts to the world. The repressed side of his personality has been overcome. Pretty powerful stuff, right guys? <laughs> There you go, folks, an analysis of some of the themes and the ending explained for Swiss Army Man. So what do you think? Is Manny real or just part of Hank's personality? And make sure to let me know any other movie or TV endings you want explained down in the comments below. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time.